Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world with self-care strategies from Chinese medicine. I'm your host, Brody Welch, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to part three of the Emotional Healing with Acupuncture series here on A Healthy Curiosity. Working with patients on the level of emotional healing, I've witnessed some incredibly profound transformation, but this stuff doesn't really lend itself well to the randomized double-blind studies that are considered the gold standard in our current medical paradigm. So despite myself, I often find myself downplaying it in an attempt to be taken seriously by the skeptics. But I realize just as much as people need to know that acupuncture is this fact and evidence-based form of medicine that's often more effective than the current standard of care for a variety of conditions, people also need to know that it's extremely potent body-mind medicine that can be mysterious, wild, and utterly transformative. So I feel like I'm taking a risk here coming across as a little woo-woo, but I really wanted to share just how powerful treating on this level can be. Today, I don't have an actual audio conversation with a guest to share. What I do have are a series of extremely personal and descriptive journal entries that one of my longtime patients so graciously shared with me. They're exactly the kind of stories that I hear over and over again in practice, but of course, I can't capture them nearly as well as someone who has lived the experience and taken the time to write about it. And yet, these are exactly the kind of stories that need to be out there in order for people to understand what Chinese medicine really has to offer. Before we get into those journal entries, I want to give you background on this particular type of treatment. There's a lot of different ways that we can approach emotional or mental issues or things like anxiety or depression in Chinese medicine. There's often an interplay between the physiology and our psychology, and we think about that in terms of different kinds of qi in Chinese medicine. So we often move the liver qi when someone feels tense or they have something that's pent up in their body or they feel stressed. We might support the lungs to help someone let go of sadness because there's that correlation described in the classics. We might clear heat from the heart to calm anxiety and to help someone settle down at night and be able to get restful sleep. But it's a little different when something's been a chronic ongoing problem that seems more intractable and longstanding. For that level of a treatment, I tend to use a set of meridians that are said to work on the constitutional level, and they go deeper than the ones that you see on a standard acupuncture chart. They're known as the Extraordinary Vessels. There's eight of them. In the Nanjing, one of the classical texts of Chinese medicine written in the late Han Dynasty, so roughly the year 200 of the Common Era, the Extraordinary Vessels are likened to reservoirs that can take on surplus when a person is inundated with a flooding. This flooding that the Nanjing is referring to could be in the form of a pathogen like malaria or Lyme disease or just some kind of, of pathogen that the body can't totally get rid of at the time. So it takes it and stashes it in a storage closet and slams the door, tries to keep the pathogen at bay. And so this is what we call latency in Chinese medicine, that keeping it quiet so that it doesn't really interfere with our daily lives. But it takes effort to keep that door shut. And from time to time, maybe when things get really busy and we're in a rush to clean up and we might open that closet door and stash one more thing in there because... Again, our lives are too busy to actually do the cleaning up. And so stuff comes falling out all over the place, and we lose the ability to keep that pathogen totally hidden. We start to experience symptoms. Now, this pathogen could be a virus or a bacterium or something coming in from the outside world like that, but it could also be a traumatic event that a person is unable to deal with and holds on to subsequent psychological baggage, and that that's what we have kept in latency. So one of the main areas of latency, one of the main storage closets in the body, is one of the eight extraordinary vessels that we call the daimai, or the belt vessel. Like a belt, it runs around the waist, and also like a belt, it's responsible for holding things in. If you can imagine having a belt on that's too tight, energy is going to stagnate in that area, which can lead to physical symptoms like a feeling of tension or fullness in the low abdomen or lower back pain, 
or even things that are not just energy stagnating, but physical stagnation like cysts or fibroids in the reproductive organs, or infertility, painful periods, like energy not flowing well in this area of the body. And because it's the only meridian that runs horizontally, a blockage in the diamai or the belt vessel has the potential to interrupt the flow of all the other channels that run through the torso. One of my most respected teachers, Dr. Jeffrey Yuen, who's an 88th generation Taoist priest and renowned teacher and practitioner, once described the Dai Mai as storing the deep crap of the postnatal existence. So any experience that we haven't fully processed or let go of, which could include a trauma, a sense of guilt or inadequacy, might be stored in the Dai. Opening the Dai Mai is akin to emptying the garbage, letting go of the stuff that we'd be better off without. If you happen to tune into last week's episode, you may recall my guest, Corey, describing how treating the Daimai catalyzed a powerful emotional release for her. The journal entries I'm about to read are written by a patient who I'm calling Shauna to preserve her anonymity. I think it's helpful to know a little bit about Shauna. She is a well-educated, professional, stylish woman with her feet very much grounded in the real world. She's smart, open-minded, open-hearted, committed to her own personal growth, and willing to bring up what's really going on for her. She is not someone who I would describe as credulous, airy-fairy, or any kind of a drama queen. She does not sensationalize or exaggerate, and I think it's important to consider that in reading these entries. So here's Shauna's account of her first Daimai treatment. This is from an email that she sent to me. There's a channel that runs around the waist. It's called the belt vessel, or daimai. I set the intention of letting go of the dark, gooey stuff that was stuck in the core of me, so deep on a conscious level that I'm not even aware of it. But last night, when I was anticipating this morning's appointment and Brody's question about what do we need to work on today, what popped up for me out of nowhere was, quote, deep, stuck stuff. When she asked me to describe it, it was dark, sticky, and gooey. When she asked me to focus on where in my body it was stuck, I felt it deep under my womb, in my chest, and in my throat. As she began the treatment, I set my intention to release that gooey, stuck, dark, sticky stuff. Wouldn't it be nice if all that stuff just went away? A little sidebar note, I always encourage my patients to set their intentions for any treatment, and I try to align my intention with that. I think it's an important part of any healing modality. Anyway, back to Shauna's journal entry. As Brody left the room, with my eyes closed by the sweet eye pillow, my mind continued with a litany of intentions, imaginings, gratitudes, and visualizations. I began with letting go of everything that was stuck beneath the level of my consciousness. I visualized things melting into water and becoming energy that could float freely away. I visualized my fears and inadequacy, something that resonated as Brody was describing the potential for a Daimai treatment, becoming fire and changing to illuminate my true self. I expressed gratitude that I was freeing my deeper self, that I was gaining an open passage or connection to a sense of centeredness and being grounded. I envisioned whatever energy was stuck there from past traumas in my childhood becoming like water and swirling with the rest of my water energy, part of myself, but freely moving, forming part of who I am, accepted fully as me so that it can add strength to my core rather than hold me back from knowing my true self. I envisioned my true self emerging freely, and I love her, came clear and strong into my mind. It brought tears to my eyes that freedom to love truly that deepest, truest self. I felt at a certain point a physical lightness of being, as if my body was trying to levitate upward through my skin. So the first journal entry leaves off there. What was happening during Shauna's Dye My Treatment? It started with her intention and visualization, but then it seems like something else happened, like the treatment stopped being something that she was making happen with her mind and with the help of the needles, and then it quite literally developed an energy of its own. The words, and I love her, came clear and strong into her mind and brought tears to her eyes, and with it, a sensation of levity, overcoming what had been dark and sticky. So we both considered that progress. But like many long-held tendencies, it bore some following up. 
So a few weeks later, Shauna came into the office and told me that she'd gained some clarity about some of the gunk that she was holding on to. She was aware of carrying around tremendous guilt about mistakes that she had made parenting her daughter, Jasmine. Even though she understood consciously that she was doing her best as a parent, but that her role models in parenting, i.e. her own parents, had left their own scars, she was having trouble letting go of this guilt. So for this follow-up session, I chose to work with the Chong Meridian, which, like the Dai Mai or Belt Vessel, is part of that Eight Extraordinary Vessel group that has to do with things that are deeply held at the constitutional level. And the Chong is particularly indicated for things that are handed down from generation to generation, that run in families, whether that's genetically inherited or just deeply held beliefs, or, in this case, repeating the same familial pattern with her own daughter that she had experienced growing up. Here's what happened at the next session. She writes, I went into the session with an, the intention of finding some healing between the generations, between my parents and my childhood and me, but especially between me and my daughter and her childhood. I told Brody that I can't forgive myself for my parenting mistakes when my daughter is depressed, and I felt some responsibility for it or at least for the fact that she didn't feel she could come to me for support. Brody's response affected me profoundly. It's a lot to lay on your daughter to make her responsible for your happiness. <laughs> Sidebar, I would like to think that I was a little more compassionate than that, but in any case, uh, that's what showed up in the journal entry. She added that my holding on to guilt and shame and sadness about my parenting mistakes is serving no purpose and may well just be clogging up the energy lines. The Chong Meridian runs on either side of the pubic bone, over the belly, to the chest alongside the breasts. By the time the session was over, I could feel intense heat and energy pulsing along the whole line, strung between the needles as though there was a lot of communication going on, call and response from one side of my body to the other. Early in the treatment, my mind flitted to an email message I had received that morning from the universe, tut.com. The quote, The answer is no, absolutely not. The question, of course, was... Are mistakes in time and space possible? The universe. I thought of that and burst into tears and lay sobbing for several minutes. My mind asked, can it be that simple? Can I let go of all the guilt I feel about the mistakes I made in parenting my daughter because they're in the past, in time, and no longer something that can be affected by the present, the here and now? So they weren't mistakes? Lying on the table, it felt like a profound insight, as if the universe really were trying to tell me that I did my best. That always feels like a cop-out to me. But I need to stop beating myself up about them. When I'd finished sobbing, when I was in the midst of the treatment, my soul spoke up. It said, I am where I need to be. It felt so clear. Then it said, I'm healing myself so that my daughter can be healed. That too feels very clear. So this kind of thing actually happens more often than you would think. Oftentimes, people have a sense of inner wisdom coming up and being clear to them on the table, sometimes taking the form of voices or remembering some wise words or a quotation, as it did for Shauna. I've had other patients report seeing healing images or even talking to loved ones who have passed on. And of course, plenty of people don't have these kind of explicit experiences that they can put words to, but they simply report later feeling like that thing that was so much in the way or holding sway over them no longer does, or that they're more able to make choices that are in line with their present day consciousness as opposed to being in the grip of old stories and outdated habits. I will admit to not having any idea how it all happens, but I can report to it happening with a great deal of regularity when the timing is right. So I wrote an email, thank you to Shauna for taking the time to write up these journal entries, and I asked her if she felt like the experience really helped her to heal in a significant way, or whether it was just one of those wild experiences that you write down and tell your friends about. Like, had she actually let go of the guilt that she was carrying around about parenting mistakes, at least to some degree? Here's what she wrote back. You know, I was pondering those questions as I was revisiting the experience. Definitely that experience marked the beginning of a shift in my relationship with Jasmine. She now comes to me for advice, comfort, laughs, and sharing. There's no longer even the slightest pulling away when we hug, just full-on love fests. 
I'm still struggling with the loving myself piece, although the balance has certainly shifted there, too. I'm not nearly as hard on myself as I used to be, but the impulses, the voices inside, still jump to criticism first before I have a chance to breathe deeply and give myself a break. I have let go of the guilt around parenting mistakes, though some moments can still make me cringe in memory. Jasmine and I have had long talks about it, and have accepted that whatever was happening in our relationship at the time was the result of both of our raging hormones. I was perimenopausal most of her teenage years. My misguided idea that I had had control over anything, and the whirlwind that is middle school and high school. There's still stuff to clear, I think, and I've given her carte blanche to challenge me on anything. But on the deepest level, we've regained our connection, which is priceless. And that's where it ends. So to sum up, she was able to let go of feeling guilty about not being a perfect mom. She was less hard on herself, and while it's not yet second nature, she is able to breathe in some self-compassion and stop beating herself up. The distance and heaviness between Shauna and Jasmine was replaced with a new level of connection and open-heartedness, and I call that a win. So I'd love to know what you think of these episodes on emotional healing, as well as any of the past episodes and what you'd like to hear on the show in the future. Of course, results aren't guaranteed with this or any kind of treatment, but hopefully these past few episodes have given you a sense of what's possible in terms of using acupuncture as a means for catalyzing deep change in the body-mind. Once again, thanks so much to Shauna for sending me these journal entries and allowing me to share them with all of you on the podcast. And if you're interested in how the body and mind interrelate from a Chinese medicine perspective. If you're curious about your constitutional type and learning about your tendencies and how understanding yourself through the lens of Chinese medicine can help you make more medicinal choices in your daily life, then my course starting October 10th, Basics of Chinese Medicine, Your Inner Ecosystem, is totally up your alley. I'd love for you to check it out. Head over to brodywelch.com under the Learn From Home tab, you can learn all about it. Hope to see you there. Thanks for listening today. For more episodes of A Healthy Curiosity, you can visit the iTunes store. If you appreciated today's show, please leave us a review. This helps other people to find the podcast. You could also head to brodywelch.com where you can find free self-care resources, learn more about Chinese medicine, and let me know what you'd like to hear about on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Till next time, be good to yourself.